Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Internationally Podcast. Before we start, let me talk a little bit about the podcast. So the Internationally Podcast is going to be a space where different international students, prospective ones, as well as current international students, to get a glimpse of the life of international students in the U.S. or abroad. This week, I am joined by my very dear friend, Suhair. Welcome to the show, Suhair. Hi, Ruth. Thank you for having me uh, at the podcast. Uh, I'm excited for the session. Yes, I am very excited as well. So before we start, let me talk a little bit about your background. Um, so Suhair um, is from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and she studied international relations with a concentration in um, Oh, international studies, sorry, with a concentration in international relations at American University of Sharjah in the UAE. Moreover, she completed an exchange program at George Washington University for a year and did another six months in D.C. after obtaining an internship. Currently, she's back in Addis working as a project and evidence coordinator at Girl Effect. Do you want to add more to that? Um, I think you've kind of summed up a bit about my educational and current work experience. Mm-hmm. So I think, um, I think we're good to go. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. So as the title of this episode is Dealing with Change, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word change? Okay. Um, interesting question. I think... For me, um, when I think of change, I think of it from a personal development perspective, and it's a positive term for me. I think it could be negative for some. I think they can be um, correlated with things like risk, uncertainty, and a lot of things. But I mm-hmm. think when I think of the term um, change, I think of words as growth, mm-hmm. um, development, uh, mm-hmm. transformation, improvement. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think... For me, um, change is more of this, um, I don't know, this very interesting word because I've been really trying mm-hmm. to uh, figure it out for a while now. So what, yeah. I, what I usually say to myself is like, I need to continuously and co- co- consciously keep changing. Mm-hmm. And that's how I think of change, like a, being a very positive thing and something that I really need in my life. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I think that's such a, a nice way of summarizing what change is and your perspective is very interesting because for some people change could be a very hard thing to do and to adapt and um, even for me personally when I hear the word change it has like two parts right so as you said it has the positive side of growth and and you know trying to improve yourself but then at the same time change is uncomfortable right it's not always Um, easy and it's not always comforting right because there are going to be bumps along the way Um, and and thank you for for sharing that so as we're like talking about specifically the international student experience what were some of the experiences that you had um, that made you deal with change okay um I think that's why I think you said uh, before I, I get into your question I think you said uh, for some, it could be a very hard um, experience, the whole idea of change. But I think that's the beauty of, uh, of it. Like, mm-hmm. I think when you go through a change, you transform into this different person. And I think the majority of the time, it, it's you, you change for the better. Mm-hmm. So I, I really want to stress to people how I really want people to, embra- to embrace change. And that's what I've mm-hmm. been like, really trying to do for the past couple of years um, mm-hmm. during my studies. Mm-hmm. But when I see change, I see it from two perspectives. It could be external and internal. Mm-hmm. Um, I like me, that. I, yeah, I start with external <laughs> because I feel okay. like I had two different experiences. Mm-hmm. I think you initially mentioned that I did my studies in the American University of Sharjah in the UAE. And then I mm-hmm. went to George Washington in D.C. And mm-hmm. I think I changed externally with the first uh, experience. And then mm-hmm. I changed internally with the second one. Um, oh. So when I start, <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I start <laughs> with external, mm-hmm. um, I left Ethiopia when I was uh, when I just turned seventeen, mm-hmm. and I uh, went to the U- UAE to study, and it was not easy. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. not an easy experience, yeah. um, especially the first semester. I 
I had to figure out a lot of things. Um, yeah. It's every day like, <laughs> yeah. time to get yeah. used to the whole experience. Mm-hmm. I think I went to a school with, um, with everyone being Ethiopian. So I never mm-hmm. really had experience. I mean, I traveled occasionally, but I never really experienced different cultures, I mean, being friends mm-hmm. with different people from different cultures. Mm-hmm. So when I went to the UAE, um, I studied international relations, mm-hmm. and 95% of the students in my class were from the Middle East. They were Whoa. more of the Emiratis and Saudis, yeah. and there was barely Africans. Um, there wow. was barely any Ethiopians in class. <laughs> wow. And taking <laughs> an international relations class, I really felt like I had to speak up. Mm. And it was a whole change for me because... That's when I understood what it means. I mean, that's when I understood what race was. I think right. in Ethiopia, we never really understood what it means to yeah. be white, what it, what it means to mm-hmm. be black, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then going there, I had to build an identity that I never knew of. Because mm-hmm. the first thing everyone asked you was, where are you from? Yep. And that's the most was, common question. That was really confusing <laughs> for me. And I think people try to create identity for you based on where you're from and in class I I had to really speak up and somehow that change made me build this identity of being an African so I think after the first year I started creating this identity where when I introduced myself I I started Mm -hmm. to proudly say I'm African wow Um, (laughs) yeah and (laughs) I think I, I was that girl in school wearing the dashiki uh, on campus. Mm -hmm. I was very uh, active in different African uh, cultural clubs. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to, I had to. And I think for me, that's why I say uh, change is a beautiful thing. I think the whole Mm -hmm. change made me build this identity and it made me love Africa in general. So if you, I think for people that really do know me now, they can tell that I, I really identify as African. Ask me who I am and I will say African first. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to comment on that first. Um, sorry, finish your thought. I don't want to. I think that was basically it. Like that's how that change, that, ex- that change made me build this external identity. That's why mm-hmm. I really want to talk, like want to mention the external part of change here as well. Um, yeah. Have you kind of experienced that kind of... Uh, <laughs> I don't, know. Uh, I don't know experience yes for sure and that's that's what I wanted to comment on that because um thank you first of all for sharing for sharing your experience and I really like the fact that you divided the change you know internal and external because those are like two significant changes that happen in our lives as we grow and as we go to school and as you mentioned like for you like being a 17 year old Ethiopian going to to this school where you're you know you're the only Ethiopian and probably the only African and I did experience that as well because as you said when we grow up in Ethiopia we we have a limited understanding and lived experience about race because everybody's the same everybody's Ethiopian right so everybody's black technically and so we never grow up thinking that oh I have to identify as Ethiopian I have to identify as African We never have that thought in our minds until we are forced to leave our country, right? And so I remember for me, even personally, um, so I first moved to the U.S. for high school when I was 15. And uh, me and my sister were the only Ethiopians in my my high school, which comprised of about 2,000 students. So that was the first time that I had to um to introduce myself because uh, as Ethiopian and the most common question people would ask you is oh so where are you from you're like oh I'm from Ethiopia right and then they're like oh where is that and they're like um it's in the eastern part of Africa and then still like you would have to explain more for some people who really do not know anything about Ethiopia so at some point I kind of felt like I was the ambassador of my country (laughs) like trying to represent Ethiopia to these people but then at the same time that builds on an immense pressure on you because what if you answer something wrong what if you don't know anything about the questions that they're asking you because my lived experience is probably different from someone else's lived experience even though you know we were both in Ethiopia so do you relate to that with the like with the pressure of being Ethiopian, but then having to represent like your whole your whole country to someone. 
Um, definitely. Um, I mean, there was a couple of Ethiopian film casters as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my case was different because I think other departments were more diverse. But when it comes to the international studies department, it was mostly people from the Middle East. Like you barely see the Africans. And, um, and the Africans that were there as well, everyone knows each other. We're barely like, I don't know, five, six max. Yeah. Um, and, and we barely were in the same class. So I remember I taking this history class and I think there was a part where we talked about Ethiopia as well. So everyone kind of turned to me and they wanted me to say something. And I feel like, yes, I lived in Ethiopia, but I don't yep. ever say. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, um, when we had to talk about Ethiopia or generally about Africa, everyone kind of expected me to say something. And... At times I had something to say, but other times I did not have anything to say. I mm -hmm. think it was very, it was a very immense uh, pressure for me mm -hmm. to speak up. But what it made me was, it made me learn how to speak up. I think coming from Ethiopia um, and going through the educational background that I had, um, I mean, I was never used to speaking up in class. I mean, we had to raise mm -hmm. our hands and we, we kind of had to follow rules to speak up in class, but here yeah. people just spoke what they thought. Mm -hmm. um, it could be anything. It could be things that doesn't even make sense, but they were used to speaking up. So what yeah. it made me was it made me learn how to speak up in class. So yeah. I started developing um, confidence in my um, in my beliefs in class. So yeah. it really did change me for the better in general. Mm -hmm. But it was just a, a difficult experience um, being the only Ethiopian and majority of the only African in class. Yeah, for sure. And I, I also relate to that. Like, even in college, whenever I was taking classes and the professor was talking about, um, not even Ethiopia, just, like, an African issue, for instance, like some other country in Africa that I probably are not really aware of, um, you know, regarding its history. And, um, yeah, people would definitely turn around and expect the only African in the class to comment on something that the professor said. And even sometimes the professors would put that expectation on you. So, so and so, do you have something to add to this? And then you're like, um, do I, you know, do I, do I comment on this or do I say, oh, no, I'm good? Like, so you're always in this dilemma of trying to speak up, but then at the same time, you don't want to be held responsible for what you're going to say if it's not correct, right? So, how do you like draw the balance between um, do I speak up or do I not? Okay. Um, I think there's a time where I spoke about something um, aside from Africa. And I think it was a sensitive topic for the majority of people in class. Mm -hmm. And like people, I mean, people got heated in that discussion. I said something and this local guy from the UAE uh -huh. kind of, he reacted and the professor did not know what to say he was like i can't comment yeah. on this like it's it's beyond me and oh, wow. he was like can someone explain to suhair about this topic and everyone in class turned to me and they tried to explain something to me and i'm like after that day i promised myself to not comment for things that are not um as necessary Mm -hmm. um i mean mm -hmm. I, I remember i used to get so pissed when you know that that um that video that they show or the picture of ethiopian family yep. with the yep. kids dying yep they kept on throwing it in class again and again and i'm like oh my god should i speak up or should i not and i used yeah. to really get pissed but yeah. what i started doing is instead of instead of speaking up in class i used to go to the professor after class and try mm -hmm. to ex ex express my my emotions then I was told mm -hmm. the professor this is not the current situation that Ethiopia is in like I mean to, to a certain extent it might be true but the yeah. only way they portray Ethiopia was in a negative uh way so right. that's what I started doing instead of speaking up the class mm -hmm. and creating um animosity from a lot of people I go to yeah. the prof professor and I kind of express my, my mm -hmm. feelings about the whole um the whole idea yeah and and thank you for sharing that because I also remember in high school um 
I think I talked about this before, but we were taking this class on environmental science and we were talking about droughts and famine. And obviously, they had to show oh. a video. <laughs> obviously, they had to show a video of Ethiopian drought. And, you know, Misawa uh, Sawat Dirk is what it's usually called. But that's, you know, that was the picture. And everybody, I was the only Ethiopian in that classroom. And I, I think I was probably the only black person in the classroom as well. Everybody else was um, either white or Asian. And so, when they were looking at that, they, was, they were obviously looking at me because they knew I was from Ethiopia, right? And so I felt like, okay, well, yes, that happened. That Like, we're not denying that it happened. But at the same time, that's only like a single narrative of what Ethiopia is about. Like, there's so much more to Ethiopians and to Ethiopia in general, right? So there are times where, you know, um, like dealing with change could be very difficult because at the same time, when an identity is placed upon you, um, you don't really know how to deal with that because it's the first time that you're 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 experiencing that. So, and I'm pretty sure you know other people have um, you know various experiences regarding to this as well. But um, going back to to what you mentioned um, earlier about um, the internal and external um, change that happened. So you you mentioned that you know when you first moved to the UAE, that was the first time you had to you know, really represent Ethiopia and it was a very hard time. Like, do you want to elaborate more on that? Like in, in the in the lens of, of change? Okay. Um, in the lens of change, I think what I would like to add, um, so that was a huge change for me. Um, moving to um, a country, to a school where I felt like I had to speak up mostly. Um, that was a huge change for me. That's why mm-hmm. I said externally because it made me develop as a person, as, a, as an individual externally. Mm-hmm. I really had to c- create an identity. And after that, it really made me change. And I started to say, I am African first. I mm-hmm. started becoming friends with mostly Africans. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole identity, like I started like learning more about different African cultures. I started mm-hmm. like falling in love with the, with the diverse and beautiful cultures of the continent. Yeah. So, I mean, that change really uh, changed me externally, honestly. I mean, yeah. like, I used to talk about Africa everywhere. <laughs> you saw me there. <laughs> like, I was literally talking about Africa everywhere. Like, um, all the papers that I used to write in campus was, was about Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to attend a lot of African events. Like, I was right. that person. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's how that changed um, mm-hmm. was able to make me become the person that I am. And that's why right. I kind of uh, divide my experiences externally and internally. Mm-hmm. And I think, when it, I think the internal change was completely different from my external mm. uh, change. I yeah, think I let's talk get about into that. that. Mm-hmm. Um, so internally, I went to D.C. Mm-hmm. That was a different experience of, it, of its own, like, When I talk about my experience in DC, I had the most amazing experience, honestly. If I do talk about my experience there, I would talk about it like, I mean, for weeks, honestly. (laughs) I guess, yeah, like really. um, Mm -hmm. I think when I went to DC, I changed internally. Like, how do Mm -hmm. I explain this? I mean, Mm -hmm. I think when I was in the UAE, I had my own group of friends. I mean, mm-hmm. I still socialize with other people, but I had yeah. my own group of people, right? Yeah. As I said, I mostly had friends from Africa, mm-hmm. uh, international students mostly. And I went to a school, to a school where we weren't meeting in the city. We we're actually kind of in the, in the university campus. So, mm-hmm. the, so the people that I usually met were people from that campus. Mm-hmm. So basically that university was my world. I used to go out on the weekends, but mm-hmm. it was not as um, accessible as DC. But with George mm-hmm. Washington, I was literally in the city and I met diverse types of people. So literally my school uh, was five minutes from the White House. Whoa. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my international affairs building was literally next to the World Bank and the IMF. So mm-hmm. imagine it was a pretty cool experience and I think that what that made me become was I started becoming a very social person. Wow. I was, yeah, I was really social. I mm-hmm. used to go to different events. Um, not a single day was the, was the same. Like literally, 
Yeah. Everyone yeah. was different. Um, and I think I really changed internally. Like I became a completely different person. People that knew me when I first got to DC. And by the time mm-hmm. I left, I was a completely mm-hmm. different person. I was very social. I was very outgoing. Yeah. Very determined. I know yeah. what I wanted in life. Mm-hmm. And it was just a beautiful experience within. Like I, I can go about this for days. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. So yeah. I really changed from a personal development perspective. I really, really did change as a person. And I grew so much in a year that I didn't when I was in the UAE for the past three years. Mm. So that's how I, I differentiate my external and my internal change. Right, right. Wow, that is so fascinating even to hear about um, your experience. And I want to maybe delve on that a little bit more because I think like the internal change that happens is very significant for everybody. And I think, um, you know, during college, a lot of things happen and we are at a very you know, transformative part of our lives and formative part of our lives. You know, a lot of uh, people adapt to new habits. A lot of people get into different, you know, activities that they haven't um, tried before. But then I'm very interested to learn more about um, what was the type of, you know, personal growth that happened inside of you that you, that made you um, think that you changed within that one year so much than the three years that you spent in UAE? Like, what were, was it the people you met? Is it the classes you took? Is it the books you read? Or was it just the overall environment that you surrounded yourself in that made you even notice the change that was happening within? Okay. Um, I think what I started when I first went to, um, to the US, to DC, was I started journaling. So uh-huh. from the first, yeah, and then, yeah. That's I, amazing. I used to write every single day. Like literally, I used to write every single day. What? So wow. And I still have the notebook with me. And sometimes I, I go back and I read them and I'm like, mm-hmm. I've changed so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. I, and I think as you said, I think mostly it's the people that I met. I've met mm-hmm. like one of the most amazing people in DC. Like yeah. I had friends from all over the world. I was that yeah. social butterfly. When I was in the UAE, like literally, I thought I wasn't a very social person, but then apparently when I came to DC, I am that person. <laughs> and everyone that I met used to tell me, so yeah, like, you're literally the most social person that we've ever met. I mean, I used to go to really big events. I was really connected. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to volunteer at the IMF. So I used mm-hmm. to meet people for like, I used to meet ambassadors. Right. Um, I did two internships when I, when I was there. Uh, mm-hmm. and I used to meet journal journalists from the White House. I used to yeah. get invited to like big events. I don't know, like right. really huge events right. and stuff. And mm-hmm. I was really connected. And people used to tell me, this is a very small world. And yeah. I never used to believe that. But once I started being very social, mm-hmm. like I-, I knew everyone. Apparently <laughs> if I go to a restaurant, there's someone that I know. And, wow. And I was like, like I am not exaggerating, honestly. Yeah. Like, I was very, yeah. very social there. Mm-hmm. And I met very interesting people. I think the people that I met, mm-hmm. um, I mean, the events that I used to go to. Mm-hmm. And that's in the class that I took as well. Yes, I took very, very interesting <sighs> classes that I liked, um, that I was very interested to take in George Washington. I was interested in painting. So I used to take a uh, painting class. Uh, music I love for four painting. hours. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, we used to sit in this museum and we used to draw, draw things, uh, paint things that our professor told us. Like, it was very mm-hmm. um, weird things, but it was very interesting class. Yeah. I used to take art museum, so we used to spend a lot of time in the museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to take creative writing and very, like, very interesting course, um, as the ones that I mentioned. So that's how I somehow developed uh, this interest in museums and mm-hmm. art in general. So I used to mm-hmm. go, I've literally been to all the museums in DC. I can what? be your local guide. Yeah. Are you and serious? I, I used to go there a lot and by myself. Mm-hmm. Like I could mm-hmm. spend the whole day at a museum and have the most amazing time. And wow. I think what I, and wh- one way I changed is I started, to, I started to become comfortable with myself. Mm-hmm. I started mm-hmm. enjoying being with myself and mm-hmm. spending a whole day with, by myself. I, I, I used to have the I mean, one of the most amazing times that I've had is by myself. 
<laughs> and wow. Like, That's the tree, amazing. There, there were trees that I, days that I used to get, go to the train and I did not know where I was going. I just decide um, in the train, I'm like, okay, today I feel like doing this. And I search uh -huh. something up and I just go uh -huh. there. And I used to go around DC, like, like I used to go around <laughs> the whole city. <laughs> that sounds so nice. You're such an adventurous person. This is amazing. Like, I never thought I was, but apparently <laughs> I, I am in DC. And people used to get surprised, literally. Um, I remember someone showing me the metro the first day I went there. And by the mm -hmm. second day, I started exploring my own. I've been to different parts of DC. I've been the been everywhere. Like I just wow. randomly walk anywhere. I mm -hmm. used to go to restaurants to try new food by myself. That's how wow. I got it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I got that's into so try different cuisines. Like mm -hmm. one day is Mediterranean. The second I'm do the second day I'm doing Chinese. I do Thai. I do Vietnamese food. Mm -hmm. I've tried everything there. Like I used to go. <laughs> wow that is such an inspiration theory like you have no idea like i feel like hypothetically i could go to a restaurant and eat by myself but in in reality i don't know i feel like people would say it's like who's the thing by themselves <laughs> eating a lot <laughs> i understand that was me in the uae but here mm -hmm. i'm a definitely I'm a, i'm a different person so i never cared And I think wow. I like that. Like, I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed being by myself and I enjoyed exploring things on my own. And I think another thing is the experiences that I had there, like going to mm -hmm. different places, trying new things mm -hmm. um, that really changed me inside. Mm -hmm. um, and I think something different was I started really working when I was in D.C. I started uh -huh. supporting myself. Hey, and money, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. And I think with everything, money came. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had the chance to go to different cities. Like whenever I had yeah. a break, I'm like, what time? And I'm in Cali. The other, I'm in, up wow. in New York. I'm wow. in Georgia. Like, so I used to yeah. really go around. Mm -hmm. And somehow I, I made time. I mean, I, I used to go to school full time. Mm -hmm. I had internships. I used to work. I used to explore the city. And sometimes I had so much time. Wow, that sounds like such a such an amazing time. Even like that one year, it seems like it has been um, such a significant part of your life that has really um, changed you as a, as a person. And and I just wanted to comment on something that you said earlier, how you started journaling when when you went to DC, and how that has helped you really grow personally and um you know really self reflect and I, i i also journal and i really like doing it but i can't do it every day i feel like that would be that would be a lot so kudos to you for doing it every day like that's like the goal right to try to see how you change but at the same time like you know trying to understand what kind of change took place within yourself that is such a great way of like documenting the things that you were thinking the things that happened and then you can really have an evidence and like a timeline of sorts it's like okay this happened this time and then this is how I like gradually changed and so so what got you into into journaling and self-reflecting I think for me I think a tip that I can give you when it comes to journaling is yeah. I had my journal book with me everywhere like it goes <gasps> with me like it's always in my bag like literally mm -hmm. it's everywhere like it's next to my yeah. bed it's yeah. with me in the metro It's with me when I go to different cities. It's always with, it's with me in class as well. So wow. every time I have an interesting idea or I feel mm -hmm. like I want to say something, I'm just yeah. there writing stuff down. I and, love that. Yeah. I, I didn't want to forget anything. I was like, I want to yeah. document my whole experience. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, like I didn't pressure myself. There's days where I literally mm -hmm. just wrote a paragraph or I wrote a sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that could be a powerful word. But other days, I could be writing three to four pages. Right. So I never right. put pressure on myself. And I just mm -hmm. wrote what I felt and what I thought. And mm -hmm. that's my advice to you. Wow. Thank you. I'm definitely going to take that advice. Because <laughs> for me, like, I used to write. Um, but then I started journaling on my laptop. So I don't take my laptop everywhere. So it's like whenever I feel like it, I write. And now I'm pretty sure I write less than when I did in college. So I think I'm going to take up 
that advice and try to like buy a little notebook and and take it everywhere with me because you know sometimes you never know when that creative spark happens and then you have to write like because if you don't write you're gonna forget it right does that happen to you definitely um and I think it's when DC when I came up with different ideas Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of business that I want to start and I never wanted to forget them so every time I had an idea I used to sit Mm -hmm. and write them for so long Mm -hmm. um because I know for a fact that I would forget it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's better when you write things down. Like instead yes. of using your laptop, I think when you write on the laptop, you're conscious about it as well. You're, you're yes. kind of thinking about um, what you're going to do. The spelling, yeah. the grammar, the whatever. <laughs> but when you're writing, you scribble things down. And it mm-hmm. maybe does help. And I think right. I recommend you as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for that great advice. I really, I really appreciate it. I'm going to start doing that now. It really sparked an interest in me as well. Um, um, so I think I wanted to ask you more about like, um, what were some of the, the things that made you notice that you changed as a person? Is it the, you know, reactions of the people around you? Or how did you how did you become aware of yourself as a growing and changed individual? Because I feel like we can change and we can grow, but at the same time, if we don't recognize that change within ourselves, is it really growth? That's a very, that's a very <laughs> interesting point. Um, yeah. I think the, what really helped for me was like right when I went to DC, I had a family member that I was very close to my aunt mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, she was there throughout my whole experience in a way so mm-hmm. by the end of my time in DC she she was surprised and she commented a lot about my change she told me sooner like the person that you you were when you first came and the person that you are now is completely different and sometimes she's so surprised she's like someone cannot change this much in a year <laughs> Yeah. I used to get that. I used to get that comment a lot. Mm-hmm. And looking back, even when I saw my journal and stuff, mm-hmm. the way I viewed myself and the way I expressed myself in the beginning and mm-hmm. how I did at the end was completely different. Right. And I'm, I'm a very reflective person. I'm always mm-hmm. in my head. I'm always reflecting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not afraid to ask people about myself. I'm like, um, mm-hmm. I ask them. I ask them like... Um, do you think I've changed in the past year? Uh, what mm-hmm. are my strengths? What are my, my weakness? I, I try to really mm-hmm. reflect with the people around me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and as I said, it's the feedback that I got from them. But then mm-hmm. I noticed the change in myself as well. Um, I think at first I used to kind of be scared of expressing myself um, at places. But by the end, mm-hmm. I did not care. Um, I was very open. I was very social and I think when you change, you feel it as well. That's the thing that I tell you. Like, I felt the change in me. Um, you felt it, I yeah. Think I definitely did. Like, kudos to you for, like, asking other people, like, okay, what are my strengths and weaknesses? And, like, trying to feed off of the feedback of other people because I think that's very valuable. But, like, most people, like, including myself, we're very averse to criticism and we're not really open. To, I mean, personally, I can't speak for other people, but, like... um you know, because you, you don't like other people criticizing you or like, unless you're actively thinking of improving yourself or like growing. And so you're like, okay, even if they say something mean, I'm not going to take it personally. I'm going to, you know, take it to build myself. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you, like, how did you become okay with other people telling you and like giving you feedback about yourself? What did you do when, when that, in, that did not align with what you thought you changed as a person? Yeah. Okay. That's such an interesting yes. question. Um, <laughs> I think I was I was similar to you. I never really liked people criticizing me. I never wanted to hear the truth. But I think in that one year, my whole focus was changing and becoming a better person. Like mm-hmm. I was very determined every single day. Like I wanted to be the best mm-hmm. version of myself. And mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out different ways of changing. And one of the things that I've learned is... So then the way we view, we, we view ourselves and the way people view us can be completely different. Mm-hmm. So I felt like it would be a great idea to ask the people around me. Uh, honestly, I didn't really ask anyone that was around me. <laughs> I chose people 
that I knew wanted the best for me. Mm-hmm. And some people that would tell me the truth and would give mm-hmm. me honest feedback. Mm-hmm. So the two people that I really used during that, that time was my aunt there. Um, I, I used to ask her back uh, again and again, like, how do you think I should change? Like, I used to go back uh, to her for a lot of things. And mm-hmm. then my internship supervisor, uh, Ms. Hortensia, yeah. like, that person, that woman changed my life, honestly. Oh. <laughs> if, I talk, if I talk about her, I could talk for, like, for so yeah. long. She was literally, yeah. like, a mother to me then. Um, mm-hmm. She gave me a lot of feedback about um, personal change and personal development. And she used to be honest with me. She was like, so mm-hmm. you want to become this person. This is how you want that you need to change yourself. Um, mm-hmm. So I valued those two people. And I took criticism very openly from them. And I feel, and if I, and if I felt like it didn't really align with me, I talked to them about it. I'm like, maybe mm-hmm. you're seeing from this perspective. But for me, this is, this is the perspective that I see this thing from. And we usually talk about it. Um, and by the end, I think we come to common ground. So it was easier for me to take those feedback um, from Mm -hmm. those individuals. Yeah. And I think that's the message that I used um, through my time there. Yeah. And this just came to my mind. I think I've also, um, for a while, like, tried to to see the kind of change that, you know, really happened. And um, I did this, but in high school, we had to, not we had to, but we had this, um, it was called an, autograph so then you you ask a few questions and then you make your friends fill it out it was like it was kind of like about you but it's also about like what they like and their favorite movies or like you know things that they like to do and so I made my friends fill that out like right before I left and then I also made my college friends fill out an autograph um you know right after our graduation and then I remember one day I was just sitting like looking at the at the comments that people gave me when I was in high school and then the comments that people gave me um in college and I you know there were some similarities between those two roots but then a version was so much more um mature and independent and like you know reliable and like there for people so I think I, I just this to my mind and I think I also did it like unconsciously it's like trying to get feedback from other people is like how did I change as an individual did you do that um I thought about it <laughs> <laughs> I really did think about it um what I wanted to do was like I wanted to check if there is a website or something a link that I could send to the people around me close family and friends and then for them to anonymously um give me feedback I thought about mm-hmm. it for so long. I actually thought about it just, I think, a week ago, but I never did it. Oh. But I think it was a. Gr- I think you gave me like the idea, that motivation to do it. I think. Yeah. I never got to hear from my from my parents, from my yeah. close family friends, from mm-hmm. close um, people around me, mm-hmm. my coworkers. I think that's what I'm gonna do next. Yeah. I think it's been a while since I got open uh, criticism about myself. <laughs> so I think it's gonna be yeah. something that I'm gonna do. Yeah, for sure. I think I think I think you should definitely do it because, as you said, like a lot of times the the way we view ourselves and the way that um, we we put value in ourselves or like the type of person that we think we are, um, it could be very different from what other people think of us. And and sometimes unless you ask, people are not going to tell you about that randomly, you know, unless it's like a very significant change that that has happened. But I also wanted to to say that, you know, change is like a very dynamic thing it changes itself (laughs) like change itself changes because um because because you never know like even if you're staying in one place like you don't necessarily have to move to another place like change and growth is a constant thing in our lives uh but I wanted to ask you like why do you think it's so important to embrace change as a positive thing and not become very detached or or what is it called adverse to change like why do you think it's very important to embrace change okay um there's so many different reasons uh yeah. to embrace change and mm-hmm. i think initially i think it allows you to break the everyday routine that we have i think yep. especially even after college once you start working you're gonna be i mean doing the same thing um day after day yeah. And I think when you embrace change, you kind of break from that. And it also allows you to think outside the box 
and mm-hmm. to discover new things and new experiences. I think that's one of my first points to embrace change. Um, I think it also rep- refreshes your attitude towards life. I mean, it gives you different perspective mm-hmm. and usually a positive one, right? Yeah, <laughs> it yep. definitely does. Yeah. Um, and I think when you have internal change, it makes you the better version of yourselves, for sure. Mm-hmm. It definitely changes you to become, I mean, yeah, as I said, the better version of yourself yeah. when, it, when you yeah. embrace change. Mm-hmm. Um, other things when it comes to change is, I think it also brings different opportunities. It allows you mm-hmm. to grow as a person and to transform. And mm-hmm. I think I just want people to embrace it, like to not be afraid of change. And I, mm-hmm. and I used to be that person before, mm-hmm. but now... I think I'm con. I think I've become a person that really wants c- consistent change, and I think um, that's hard too. We should talk about that as well. Like, I want change every time, and I think yeah. moving back home now and starting mm-hmm. um, my proper full time job, I always want change. I think after experiencing DC, like somehow I want mm-hmm. to, I don't know, have change change every. I mean every time and I think it's it's been hard as well yeah, at the same time for sure have you yeah have you kind of experienced that you need to consist to always change and has that been a challenge for you yeah for sure I think um I, I think it's so for someone who has moved to like a different country at uh, at a young age I had to deal with change like right then um without really having an understanding of the world or like having had a, a lot of lived experience. So sometimes you you don't really get to choose when change happens in your life. It's unexpected. But for me personally, like the change that happened when I moved to the... Then when I moved to college, there were two types of changes, right? As you said, the first one was the external one. is like moving to a different country. Like literally everything is different around me. The place I lived was different. The, the, the school I went to was different. And so that was like more of the external change. But internally, at the same time, I grew as a person because I became more open-minded and interacting with people from different backgrounds. It creates that space for you to grow and change at the same time because it makes you realize that, you know, like there are other people in this world who have different kinds of lived experiences and who have different types of culture. Learn things new things every day and it makes you like for me it personally made you know humble and uh, really people and and their history and their stories then specifically talking about college, you know being an international student there's a lot of change that happens and um you know starting from being in an, in a new environment to like meeting different people and um trying to adjust to even like the school system and the way that you know people teach and people learn it's like a very different um environment to be in and immerse yourself in but that's what i really admire about international students it's it's the resilience to adapt to any kind of new environment and i see that consistently with a lot of people that i've met um and i i don't know what it is but you know students tend to have that that of adapting to a new environment really quickly and learning how to cope up with their with their environment have you have you noticed that as well yes I think I definitely agree with with what you said I've noticed it with a lot of people that that have met a lot of international students I mean we could come from different countries from different parts of the the continent or the world Mm -hmm. but somehow they all have this skill set or that resilience that you mentioned so I definitely do agree with you yeah sure um yeah and and th- this also made me like think about the the types of experiences that you know international students have are very very different and are very unique to each international student right so the experience that i had in college is completely different from my friends experience even though we went to the same school and we're from the same country right because it's an environment where you get to to learn more about yourself at the same time you're trying to explore different types of things that that you relate with, that you enjoy doing. Um, but at the same time, like, I wanted to, like, go back to the thing that you said about, you know, going to new places and, like, being adventurous because I've always wanted to, like, do that. Like, be, like I love traveling, but at the same time, I'm always like, wait, is it safe? Is it, is it, well, what's going to happen? You know what I mean? 
so how do you how do you that that fear or that um I don't know barrier that people tend to usually put that prevents you from from embracing change or like growing as a person okay I think with what you said with ter- in terms of um things being safe looking back to it now I I wouldn't do some of the things that I did when it comes <laughs> to traveling like yeah. I I had this experience I mean this crazy experience that I sometimes share with people um yeah. sometimes um so right after my time in DC I was not done with that adventure so I mm-hmm. decided to volunteer in a different country and I got it through mm-hmm. my um through school through Washington from uh, George Washington mm-hmm. so I ended up going to Italy for six weeks uh-huh. it was a mm-hmm. teaching experience and it was in the middle of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it was in Naples, south, south mm-hmm. of Italy, but we were literally mm-hmm. like in a very small town. I mm-hmm. was terrified, but then I'm like, I can do this and I am going to do this. Mm-hmm. And I went and, and it yeah. ended up being one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Mm-hmm. Met amazing people, uh, made friends that I still talk to till this day. Mm-hmm. Um, this was literally two years ago. And I think the story that I want to tell is I wanted to go around um, Italy. Uh So um, I had an interesting um, friend as well that I met there. Um, She came from Turkey as well. And we were both volunteering and we wanted to go around Italy. So (laughs) that story. So yeah, when (laughs) I think about it, I'm like, so we, we, wanted to go around the, the, um, the country but we did not know where we we're actually going so we packed mm-hmm. our stuff we did everything we put everything in a backpack okay yeah and I remember we we're planning to go the next day but then one of our friends came and was like what if you guys go today and we're like yes what if we go now and we literally mm-hmm. took um uh, the, the, the our stuff and we took the the next train we were literally running to get the train and oh we God. got into the train and we, we have no idea where we're going and we're oh, like okay where should where should we go we're like uh we got it we went to the proper town of naples um the next train that we uh train that we got was to florence and we're like okay let's mm-hmm. go to florence we yeah. got into the train we have no idea where we're staying <laughs> <laughs> we found a hotel uh, mm-hmm. a good one apparently for a good price we stayed there for it for a day and we took we spent we went around the city like we literally went around everywhere and the next day we're like where should we go and we went to the train wow. station and the the next train was going to Pisa and we're like let's go to Pisa we got into the train wow I ended up going to five cities in Italy back to back oh I'm my god in a backpack and looking back to it now, I think I was very adventurous then. <laughs> if you asked me to do it now, maybe I wouldn't. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I think I was just living the moment then. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't think I have a proper answer to your question. Because <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think I was in a different state then. That I'm not yeah. now. Um, right. I, yeah. So, <laughs> have you experienced anything like this? The only thing that comes. So, for me, I don't know. Hypothetically, I like to think of myself as you know spontaneous and and doing things randomly. But I'm I'm a planner. I'm usually um, I like to know like the details of things, like the logistics. I'm very interested. Um, and learn okay if I'm going somewhere I need to know where I'm staying what time I'm getting there how I'm going to get there am I traveling alone am I with someone but the only thing that comes to mind is one time I had to uh, go to this conference uh, for for school and I was with my friend going so we took a bus and we went to um, New York and then we had to take a train from New York to New Jersey but then we almost missed the train okay so I remember (laughs) I remember it was me and my other friend and we were like running around the train station and and do, do you remember the scene in Home Alone where um 
he's like running around <laughs> trying to catch the plane. Yeah. yeah. So that's what came to my mind as I was ran like running and like panting and we were like all sweating. But at the same time, we like we did not miss the train. Like we got there barely, like one second before the doors closed. And I was like, oh my God, I have never had experienced like such a rush of like adrenaline before. And um, and that was only because the bus was late and it wasn't really uh, um, on our end. It was just, you know, the bus was late. So we had to do that. But usually I'm, I'm very um, detailed or oriented. So I really like to plan things. And I like to think like hypothetically if things come up like, OK, yes, on a whim, like I would go. But at the same time, I, I think my my what is it called my my better my logic or like my sensibility would get the best of me usually okay (laughs) um I think I was that person as well back then I I really wanted to plan things but I think for this case that was the beauty of it like not knowing what I'm going to be doing next where I'm staying where I'm eating like Uh we just had a backpack with us can you imagine (laughs) that girl with a backpack going around the country and we met some amazing people there like honestly Mm -hmm. I think it's people I think yeah the kind of people that you meet unintentionally are the most amazing people in the world like genuinely (laughs) for sure (laughs) yeah so I like it's just I'm still laughing about my experience like I, I think it was just um too much then but I'm yeah glad that I did it like I have no regrets like I have For stories sure. to tell exactly me embracing yes. change honestly um so yeah <laughs> there you go if you want to have stories to tell embrace change that's like such a such a great way of of um really you know summarizing our conversation today and as we're ending our conversation I wanted to ask you um what advice do you have, you know, for current international students, for prospective international students who are dealing with the topic of change? Okay. Um, I know I can't tell everyone to embrace change in a similar way, because I think we take on things from in, different, in different ways. I think we're built different, mm-hmm. differently. I think, as you mentioned, you're planned, and um, it could be harder for you to embrace change, right? So I think it, I would tell people to, to actually embrace it in, in their own way. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, but they have to. I agree that everyone has to embrace change. I mean, like, they should be open to things. Um, which, I mean, mm-hmm. and college is the best part of your life, honestly. Mm-hmm. Looking back to it, I think mm-hmm. college is a time where you can really figure yourself out. I think mm-hmm. in college, you come in as someone and you can leave being a different, a different, a different, and a completely um, changed person. So I just, I just tell everyone. I mean, I'm not telling everyone to go crazy as I did, go around <laughs> the city and do things <laughs> that yeah. could be unsafe. But I tell them uh, to be active, maybe in um, school activities. And I think studying abroad, mm-hmm. that's the beauty of it. There's mm-hmm. so m- there's different types of clubs, right? School activities that you can participate in, mm-hmm. and so many things that you can pick up on. And you meet different types of people. And I think even by meeting different types of people, you change in a different way, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like with every person that you meet and with with every conversation that you have with that person, there's in a way you do change. Mm -hmm. So I think for those that are not very open as I was, I think Mm -hmm. just just trying to be active in campus, like try to meet different types of people. Uh, participate mm-hmm. in different things and take uh, different types of um, classes and I think that mm-hmm. changed your perspective and I think mm-hmm. through time you learn to embrace change and I think that's my advice to international students. Yeah well thank you so much to hear I think this was one of the um, most interesting conversations that I've had and and honestly like you you inspiring me to become more adventurous and to be spontaneous and really embrace change even myself because I used to think like I was the kind of person who's like very, you know, outgoing, social and um, but at the same time, there's always room for improvement. Right. So um, even for me, what I would what I would tell other um, international students is to to really, you know, take advantage of the opportunities that are there because it's going to be gone the moment you leave college, like the opportunities you have 
are not going to stay there waiting for you, right? So there's always the experiences that we have. And as you said, like college is the time where we explore and where we grow as individuals. And it's one of the best years uh, of, of my life as well, because it was the time where I got to really learn a lot about a lot of different things. And, you know, as you mentioned, the people that you meet, the classes that you take, um, and just being in a different environment itself, it's it's motivation for you to learn more about things and to learn more about yourself every day as well. So, so yeah. Um, do you want to add any last minute thoughts before we end? Um, I'm just happy to to share this conversation with you. I think um, I really made me proud about everything that I've done <laughs> in college yeah. somehow. Yeah. But um, somehow, like, I still think I could have done more. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And that's why I really wanted to come here today and to kind of motivate people to actually uh, do more on campus. I mean, in college in general, honestly, like, there's no amount of experience that you can get um, as college. Like, you can be anyone. You can... Um, I don't know, like, college is just a special time in your life that I just, that I just tell everyone to just, um, uh, complete, I think that's a time where you could completely uh, embrace change. That's why I kind of keep on stressing this again and again. Um, yeah. Right? So I think um, you can't get that back. I think I, yeah, I went back all the way sure. to memory lane and I'm just remembering all the good times about college so I really wanted to say thank you Ruth for having me and participate in this very interesting conversation that we had today it made me reflect more as well and I've learned interesting things uh, from you as well so Mm -hmm. I just really hope that a lot of international students um, get the chance to hear this um, Mm -hmm. this your podcast in general Mm -hmm. Um, because I think it's just been really beneficial for me as well like listening to your uh, podcast it has helped me really reflect uh, on my time in college mm-hmm. so I think um, I just really want to say thank you for having me today <laughs> oh uh-huh. thank you so much to hear thank you for being such a wonderful guest and I also learned a lot about myself today um, just reflecting it on my college experience with you and 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 thank you for being so supportive of the podcast and for even agreeing to be a guest so I really want to say thank you for you as well yeah for sure okay <laughs> all right thank you again of um, course so as we're ending the conversation please make sure to go follow the official instagram page at internationally by ruth that is l-i-e and send an email with your questions or concerns about being an international student internationally by ruth at gmail.com thank you again for tuning in today i hope you have a lovely week ahead of you and take care of yourselves everybody bye mm-hmm.